when he talks about Rajab, he says, لا يقاربه شيء من الشهور. There is no other month that comes close to the hurma and the fadl in the Allah that is available in this month, to the sanctity and to the glory with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَانَ أَهْلُ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يُعَذِّمُونَهُ فِي جَاهِلِيَّتِهِمْ and the Juhala, he says, used to honor this month in their jahiliya. Falamma ja'al Islam, but when Islam came, lam yazdad illa ta'adiman wa fadla. All Islam did was add to the greatness and to the merits of this month. And so you see that in this particular month, the smallest act goes a long way. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like overtime. You know what I mean? Like if you work an hourly job and you get paid, let's say, 20 bucks an hour, when you work overtime, you're getting paid 30 bucks an hour, right? Time and a half, you get a little bit of a push. Rajab is that push, you know? The same act that you would do in another month would get you maybe two steps closer to God. But in this month, by doing these same actions, you would get 10 steps closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For no other reason than God is merciful. Yeah? And so there are many things that you and I can engage in in this month. For example, it is mustahab to take out ghusl. Okay? Um, there is a hadith from our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, where he is reported to have said, Man adraka shahra rajabin faghtasala fi awwaliha wa awsatiha wa akhirihi kharaja min dhunubihi ka yawma waladtu ummuhu. Subhanallah. He says, once who enters the month of Rajab and does a ghusl on the first of Rajab and in the middle of Rajab and on the last of Rajab will have their sins washed away as if they were a newly born child, he says. Simple, we got nothing to lose. Yeah, we got nothing to lose. If you haven't done ghusl this evening, go home or tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is also the first of Rajab. Take out ghusl. We have absolutely nothing to lose and keep the niyyah, inshallah that you will do ghusl on the 15th as well and towards the last part of Rajab. Something else we can do is fast, right? Um, the fasting in this month, there's a lengthy, lengthy tradition in which there is a reward that is mentioned for every fast one does in the month of Rajab. But just to give an idea or a glimpse, um, again, um, this hadith is from our seventh Imam alayhi salam where he says, Rajabun shahrun azim." يُضَاعِفُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَيَمْحُ فِيهِ السَّيِّئَاتِ He says, Rajab is a great month with Allah in which your hasanat, your, your actions, your good deeds are doubled or يُضَاعِف, multiplied وَيَمْحُ فِيهِ And your evil deeds are wiped away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمًا مِنْ رَجَبٍ تَبَاعَدَتْ عَنْهُ النَّارِ مَسِيرَةَ السَّنَةِ he says, one who fasts, one fast in the month of Rajab, they will be distanced from the fire of Jahannam by the distance of one year. Yeah? Whatever distance is covered in one year. You know, so at that time, subhanAllah, you know, that time you travel by like a camel, you know? And today you travel by a plane, you know? And so whatever distance you can cover by a plane, you can ask for that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that is the promise, that you would be distanced away from that. And he continues, وَمَنْ صَامَ ثَلَاثَةَ أَيَّامٍ وَجَبَتْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ And one who fasts three days in the month of Rajab, Allah would promise them Jannah. All we have to do is not ruin it. You know, that's the thing, right? All of these things are promised to us. One who does this gets this. One who goes here gets this. Because Allah is not trying to lie to us. Allah is not a salesperson, you know what I mean? Who tries to trick you into getting extra purchases, right? Allah is promising us these things. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us these things, as long as we don't ruin it ourselves, we will get these things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's the promise that He has made. So a couple of simple things you and I could do. We take out ghusl. We fast. I know fasting is not easy, right? Um, but we fast because there's a promise awaiting. Eventually, our niyat of fasting will change to where we don't want anything from God. We just do it because God loves those who fast. Right? So eventually, it will change to that, inshallah. Other things that you and I could do, as much istighfar as possible. Yeah? As much istighfar. 
right? Because this is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yamhus sayyat. He wipes away evil deeds. So remember your evil deeds and pray to Allah to forgive you. Take out sadaqah, right? There's many hadith in this month that talk about the importance of sadaqah, to take out sadaqah every single day in this month. Now, we can make it a bit simpler, right? So for example, if I want to take out a dollar a day and there's a possibility that I may forget, give $30 of sadaqah tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, it's a good day to give sadaqah anyways, but make the niyyah that, Ya Allah, this is a dollar a day for the entire month of Rajab because you love those who give sadaqah. Yeah? Whatever the amount you can afford, but make a niyyah to the best of your ability that this is sadaqah for the entire month of Rajab and inshallah it will be counted for you as if you gave every single day. Recite as much of the Quran as you can in this month. Um, of course, for those who go for ziyarat and umrah, there is nothing like the ziyarat and the umrah of Rajab. And most importantly, right, uh, we have to use this month as a training opportunity for the month of Ramadan. Yeah? Um, all of these things, if you think about, that are recommended here, where we give sadaqah so that others can benefit. Uh, we do istighfar. Um, we recite the Holy Quran. We fast. All of these things um, are, are gearing us towards the month of Ramadan. And this is, I think, something that, that we need to focus on. You know, you'd, you'd never get an athlete who would enter a tournament without preparing for that tournament. Yeah? Every sports have a preseason, they have workouts, they have all of these things. Why? To get that athlete in a prime shape so that they can accomplish and have most success. It's only us, you know, who wake up first of Ramadan and say, I'm ready. Yeah? It doesn't work that way, man. It really doesn't work that way. That's why we're so sluggish for the first 10 days of Ramadan, right? Can't even think, think of food only, falling asleep at work, because we didn't do any prep work, yeah? But if we did some prep work, all that sluggishness would come out right now. And when we come into the month of Ramadan, we would go running towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.